In this video, we are looking at the algebra of complex numbers. The specification says that we should be able to perform straightforward arithmetic operations with complex numbers, understand real and imaginary parts, use complex conjugates, be able to equate the real and imaginary parts of a complex number, represent complex numbers on argan diagrams and use the modulus and argument form as well as the x plus i y form for a complex number and we should be able to multiply and divide complex numbers given in modulus argument form so the key skills that we must have include basic arithmetic the knowledge that if z is x plus i y, then the complex conjugate of z is x minus i y. The knowledge that to divide w by z, we multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the complex conjugate of z. If z is x plus i y, then we say that x is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z. And if x plus i y is the same as u plus i v, then the real parts must be the same. That is, x must equal u, and the imaginary parts must be the same. That is, y equals v. We must be able to represent a complex number, x plus i y, by the point x y on the argand diagram. And we should know that the modulus of z is the length of the line joining the origin to the point representing z. So that is simply the square root of x squared plus y squared, if z is x plus i y. And that the argument of z is the angle made at the origin by the positive real axis and the line going from O to P. The argument of a complex number is normally given in radians and is usually either an angle between minus pi and pi or an angle between naught and 2 pi. We should know that if the modulus of z is r and the argument of z is theta, then z is r times cos theta plus i sine theta. And finally, we should know that the modulus of z times w is the modulus of z times the modulus of w. The modulus, modulus of z divided by w is the mod of z divided by the mod of w. The argument of z times w is the argument of z plus the argument of w. And the argument of z divided by w is the argument of z minus the argument of w. One does need to remember though the conventions that the argument of z should lie between minus pi and pi or possibly between naught and 2 pi. So let's now move on and start having a look at some examples. So the first example tells us that the complex number z satisfies the equation z times 2 plus i must equal 1 plus 2i all squared. We have to find z in the form x plus i y and then we have to find the modulus and argument of z. The sensible thing to do is to start by considering the right hand side of the equation which is 1 plus 2i squared and perform the arithmetic to calculate that. So we've got 1 plus 2i squared is 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 2i. Expand the brackets out. 1 plus 4i plus 4i squared. Remember that i squared is equal to minus 1. So we've got 4, what's that, 1 plus 4i plus 4 times minus 1. Which is going to simplify to minus 3 plus 4i. So the equation can be rewritten as z times 2 plus i equals minus 3 plus 4i. 
So we've got z must equal minus 3 plus 4i divided by 2 plus i. To do a complex number division, we need to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the complex conjugate of the bottom of the fraction. So we can say that z is the same thing as minus 3 plus 4i times 2 minus i divided by 2 plus i times 2 minus i. Multiplying the brackets out, the 2 plus i times 2 minus i gives us 2 squared minus i squared. But i squared is minus 1, so we've got 2 minus minus 1, so that's 5. Multiplying the top out, we've got minus 6 plus 3i plus 8i minus 4i squared. Again, we need to remember that i squared is minus 1. And if we do that and simplify, we end up with z equals minus 2 plus 11i divided by 5. So we've solved the equation. So the solution for z is minus 2 plus 11i divided by 5, or minus 2 fifths plus 11 fifths i. Moving on to the second part of the question, we have to find the modulus and argument of z. It's always quite a good idea to draw a quick picture to show the complex number z on the Argand diagram. The modulus of a complex number is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So in this case, we've got the modulus of z is the square root of minus 2 squared plus 11 over 5 squared. And that rapidly simplifies to the modulus of z is root 5. If we mark the argument of z onto the diagram, we see that the argument of z in this case is an obtuse angle. It's much, much easier to start off by calculating the acute angle theta there. And if we just consider the lengths that we've got, we've got a um, vertical side of 11 over 5 and we have a horizontal side of 2 over 5. So in that right angle triangle, we have tan theta is 11 over 5 over 2 over 5. That tells me that theta is 1.391 radians. And the argument of z is going to be pi minus theta which is 1.751 radians. So let's now move on to a second example. Given that the complex number z and its complex conjugate z bar satisfy this equation 2z bar plus i times z equals 1 plus 2i times 2 minus 3i, find z in the form x plus i, y. Well, again, the first thing to do will be to say that if z is x plus i, y, then the complex conjugate is x minus i, y. And to consider the right-hand side, 1 plus 2i times 2 minus 3i, multiply the brackets out, or indeed use your calculator if your calculator has complex number functions on it. Multiply it out, we get 1 plus 2i times 2 minus 3i is 8 plus i. So the equation becomes two lots of z bar, that's two lots of x minus i y, plus i times z, so that's plus i times x plus i y equals 8 plus i. If you multiply the brackets out, and then remember that i squared is equal to minus 1. We obtain 2x minus 2yi plus xi minus y 
must equal 8 plus i. At this stage, we need to collect together the real terms on the left-hand side. That's 2x, take away y, and then collect together the imaginary terms, which is x minus 2y, lots of i. So we've got 2x minus y plus x minus 2y times by i must equal 8 plus i. Look at the real terms. We've got on the left-hand side 2x minus y. On the right-hand side, we've got 8. So we can conclude that 2x minus y must equal 8. On the other hand, if we look at the imaginary terms, on the left-hand side, we've got x minus 2y, lots of i. On the right-hand side, we've just got one lot of i. So we can conclude that x minus 2y must equal 1. We now have a pair of simultaneous equations, which we can solve rapidly to obtain x must equal 5 and y must equal 2. So we now know that z is equal to 5 plus 2i. Our final example, we have two complex numbers. The first one is z equals 3 plus 5i, and the second complex number has a modulus of 3 and an argument of minus 3 pi by 4. We have to start by finding the modulus and argument of z. So again, start by just drawing a quick sketch of the Argand diagram with z on it. The modulus of z will simply be the length of the line joining the origin to z. So that's the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared, which is root 34. The argument of z is theta, where tan theta is 5 over 3. So we've got theta is tan to the minus 1 of 5 over 3, which is 1.030 radians. We've now got to find the modulus and argument of z times w, together with z divided by w. So for zw, first of all, we know that the modulus of zw is the same thing as the modulus of z times by the modulus of w, which is root 34 times by 3, which is 17.5 to 3 significant figures. We also know that the argument of zw is the argument of z plus the argument of w, so that's 1.03 plus minus 3 quarters pi, and that, to three significant figures, comes out to be minus 1.33 radians. And minus 1.33 radians is certainly in between minus pi and pi. If we look at the division, we know that the modulus of z over w is the same thing as the modulus of z divided by the modulus of w. So that's root 34 divided by 3, which is 1.94, correct to three significant figures. The argument of z over w is the argument of z minus the argument of w. So that's 1.030 minus minus 3 pi by 4 which gives me an angle of 3.387 radians. Now, 3.387 radians is bigger than pi. So we just need to think what that's telling us. What we've got is that z over w has an argument, which is a reflex, reflex angle. We've got 3.387. But the convention that we're using is that the, the argument lies between minus pi and pi. So instead of using the reflex angle there, we must use the remaining angle going the opposite direction. So instead of going 
anti-clockwise from the positive real axis. We're going to go clockwise from the positive real axis by an angle of 2.897 radians, which tells me that the argument of Z over W is minus 2.897 radians. The minus sign is because we are going clockwise rather than anti-clockwise. And that completes this video on the algebra of complex numbers.